you can draw this in Procreate. During this tutorial, I will guide you through the steps to create this awesome stylized landscape. You don't need any experience with drawing or with Procreate at all. And once you have followed the entire tutorial, you'll end up with an awesome artwork just like these examples from previous You Can Draw This video tutorials. Or check these amazing results from my friends at Patreon where you'll find even more Procreate tutorials and a lot of brushes. So if you can't get enough of these tutorials, then I would suggest checking out Patreon. For this tutorial, what you need is a canvas of 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels and the color palette which I have linked in the description, it's totally free. And we'll also be using some brushes from my free treasure chest which you can get access to through freefromflow.com. Now if you're ready, go and grab your pencil or your finger and let's get started. First thing we'll do is fill a layer with a color from the color palette. We will be using this second color in the first row and we will just drop it onto our canvas. Just grab this little circle and drag it onto the canvas. And now we are going to create some layers with hills. So first go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer. And for the brush, we will be using the monoline brush. I have the opacity set to 100% and the size is set to 20%. And for the color, we are going to start with the third color in the first row. And we are going to create a wobbly line from left to right. We'll start about here and make a wobbly line to the right. Then we'll fill the shape, the lower part of it. So drop the color in there and then create another layer by going to the layer menu, tapping the plus for a new one. And for the color, we will go to the fourth color in the first row. And now let's make another wobbly line. We'll start about here and make a wobbly line like this. So it's crossing that other hill over here. And then just drop in the color to fill this one as well. Then we will create another layer. So tap the plus and move on to the next color. That's the fifth color in the first row. And now let's start about here and make a wobbly line like this. Then drop in the color to fill it. And then we'll move on to the next shape, which will be a really easy one. Let's tap the plus first for a new layer. Then we'll grab the next color, which is the sixth color in the first row. And now we are going to start about here, a little bit below halfway of our canvas. About here, we'll make a line, hold your pin in place to make it snap to a quick shape or a quick line. And then tap one finger on the screen to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal. Then let's drag the color in the lower half. And now let's first take a little moment to rearrange things here if needed. I want this hill to be a little bit higher. For example, layer four, I'll go to the move tool and I'll make sure that snapping is turned on because then if you move it up, you'll see that vertical line and you are sure that it's still in the center. So I'll move it up just a little bit and I'll do the same for layer three. So go to that layer, then to the move tool and drag it up just a little bit. But to make sure that it's in the center and then tap the arrow again to get out of there. Now we are going to make another layer. First, go to the top, go to layer five, then tap the plus for a new layer. And for the color, we will go back to this color, the fourth color in the first row. And now we are going to start a little bit lower about here. We'll go to the right, then a little bit lower and go like this. So it's a little bit of a wavy line here. And that will fill that area by dragging in the color. Now we are going to add more elements to our scene, which doesn't really look like a scene yet. Let's create a new layer on top by tapping the plus. And for our color, let's grab this one, the fourth color in the second row. We are going to add some bushes to the foreground. We'll start a little bit lower than this, this line. And we'll make these semicircles like this and then we'll make two other semicircles over here and then we'll fill these shapes by dragging in the color next let's work on a little house let's put that on a layer underneath layer seven so first let's go to layer six 
tap the plus for a new layer. And for our color, we are going to grab this first color in the first row. And now let's go to the selection tool. That's the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle, and then turn on color fill. We are going to start by creating a rectangular shape. So drag from one corner to the other. And then it'll automatically fill with the color we're using. Then tap the S shape ribbon again, then use the brush to create a triangle on top. You can hold your pen in place to make it snap to a quick shape. And you can use edit shape here at the top to transform the little triangle a little bit. And then drag in the color to fill the shape. Now you can see we have a little thingy over here. It's not entirely tidy. So let's go to the selection tool, turn off color fill, and then drag from this area to here. So we can cut that part off. Once you have the selection, you can go to the layer menu, tap the layer and select clear. That's looking better. Now let's create a new layer underneath this one. We'll tap layer six first, then tap the plus. Let's zoom out a little bit. First, let's grab a different color. Let's use this last color in the first row. And then let's go to the selection tool again and turn color fill back on. Now we'll make a rectangular shape on this side. Let's start about here, drag it down. And we can go for something like this. Now let's turn off the selection. Let's zoom out a little bit. Check out our half house. And now we are going to work on the roof. Let's make a new layer for that on top of layer eight. So first select layer eight, then tap the plus. And for the color, we are going to grab this nice red. It's the seven color in the first row. Go to the selection tool. Still make sure that it's set to color fill and make a rectangular shape. Next, we'll go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow to transform it and make it fit on top of our house. Now you need to set it to distort. Now let's move it a little bit and we can grab this middle handle to skew our roof. And we're going to make it fit on top of our house. We'll make it a little bit shorter and make it hanging over this area here. And we'll also make sure that it's, well, that it's not right on top of the house, but did you see it overhanging there a little bit? It's more like extended there. So if you have something like this, then you're fine. Then tap the arrow again. And now we are going to duplicate this layer. So you can go to the layer menu, drag to the left and then tap duplicate. And then we'll drag this one underneath the house layer. Let's also drag it underneath this one. Now let's go to the move tool again, the move and transform tool. And now let's flip it horizontal. You can see it over here, flip it and move it this way. And let's still use the stored and make it connect right there at the top. You might need to zoom in a little bit to see it clearly. So you'll want it to connect here at the top and you'll want it to look a little bit natural. I think it's looking nice right now. And then just tap the arrow again. And now we can make our house a little bit smaller. We'll need to select all of these layers of the house. Let's drag to the right, selecting all four of them. And let's, you know, let's group them. You can see the option to group here. That way we are staying a little bit organized. So we can just tap the group. Then go to the move and transform tool, set it to uniform, and then use a corner handle to make our house a little bit smaller. Let's go for this. 
or maybe even a little bit smaller something like this and then tap the arrow again now we're going to add some bushes and trees let's first make a new layer on top of our group tap the plus and for the color let's grab this color over here it's the second color in the second row Let's start about here and make a wavy line in front of our house, then go back and then drop in the color to fill that shape. Now I want the lower area to be nice and crisp and horizontal. So let's go to the S shape ribbon, the selection tool, set it to rectangle, but turn off color fill. And now let's make a selection of the lower part. And then you can use a three finger swipe or just go to the layer, tap it, and use clear now let's make some more of these bushes so let's just use the brush the same color and let's create a little bush over here we'll make these semi-circles some smaller ones here then close that underside doesn't have to be tidy and then just drop in the color to fill it and then again you can go to the s shape ribbon make a selection of the underside and use a three finger swipe or clear on the layer. And then finally, let's make one over here as well. Close the underside, drop in the color and use the selection tool to clear that lower half. Go to the layer, tap it and use clear. Then let's make a new layer underneath the house so first select layer six then tap the plus and for the color let's use that first color in the second row and now let's make two trees behind our house let's start about here make it pretty big make sure you close the shape then another smaller one over here close the shape and then drag in the color to fill these shapes next we'll create some rocks in the water Let's make a new layer underneath these trees. Let's tap the plus for the color. Let's let's just keep using this color. Still using the monoline brush. And let's make a semicircle thingy bumpy over here. And another one over here. A little bit of a random shape. Drag in the color to fill these. And then we'll use the selection tool again to remove the lower part. We can actually select both of these areas, then go to the layer, tap it and use clear. Now we are going to use the same technique to create some clouds. Let's go all the way back to layer one, tap the plus for a new layer. And for the color, let's use the first color in the first row. Now, in case you are running out of layers halfway because your iPad can't handle it, then I would suggest making your canvas a little bit smaller. You can do that by going to the wrench, then to canvas, then to crop and resize. Go to settings and turn on resample canvas. And now over here you can make your canvas smaller and that way you will, you will get more space for more layers. Now for our clouds, let's again make some bumpy shapes. You can make some semicircles all the way to the right. And then let's close it here at the bottom. We need a little bit more over here. Let's fill that shape. And let's make another small cloud over here. Close the shape, fill it. And then we'll use the selection tool technique again. So select that lower part for both clouds and either go to the layer, select clear or swipe with three fingers. Now, all I want to add before we can start texturizing is a tree over here. Let's create a layer for it. I need it to be on top of these bushes over here. So let's select that layer, tap the plus. And for the color, let's grab this color, the first color in the third row. We are going to start our shape a little bit above that lower part of this bush. So we'll start about here, go all the way in this direction, 
then up and to this side. And we'll add a little, a little oval over here, a little extra to our tree and then drop in the color to fill our tree shape. Now, in case you want it to be bigger or you're not entirely happy with the shape, you can just go to the magic wand and then to liquefy, set that to push and make sure that distortion and momentum are turned off. You can make the brush nice and big and you can just push and pull and change the shape of your tree a little bit. If you make the brush smaller, you get control over smaller areas. And that makes it easier to make these subtle changes. I think it's looking fine right now. Let's tap the magic wand again to get out of the menu. And now let's add a tree trunk for our tree. So let's make a new layer on top of this one by tapping the plus. And then for the brush, we are going to the treasure chest brushes, which like I said, you can get them for free by going to freefromflow.com. We are going to use the fine liner brush. And for the color, we are going to use this color over here, the second color in the third row. I have the opacity of the brush set to 100% and the size is set to 28%. Now we are going to start about here and make the first line for our tree trunk. Then we'll make another line over here. And if you use light pressure, your line will become thinner. So make sure that at the ends, the line of the branch is thinner. And here as we go to the base, to that tree trunk, it gets broader. Color that in. And then we can use that same technique as we used before. We can go to the selection tool, make a selection of that lower part, and then go to the layer, tap it, use clear. And then we have a nice crisp underside. Let's also add a tree trunk for these little trees. Let's use a different color though. Let's use the first color in the third row. Now first let's go and make a new layer on top of these little trees. So first go to layer 14, then tap the plus for a new layer. And then let's start about here, move up and add little side branches. One over here, one over here, and let's do the same for this little tree. Two little side branches. That is looking great. Now let's get started with texturizing. We are going to use the spackle brush for that. It's also part of the treasure chest brush pack. I have the opacity of this brush set to 100% and the size is set to 45%. And we are going to get started with the sky. We'll, we'll work from the back to the front. Now for the color, let's grab this fifth color in the first row. And we need to go to the correct layer. We need to go to layer one. And let's go over the top area to add a little bit of that reddish orange color and add some more texture and interest to our sky. Let's grab a light color as well, the first color in the first row. And let's work from the bottom to the top. I'm using very light pressure, by the way. Now let's do the same for our clouds. Let's go to the clouds layer, layer 16. Now to make sure that we won't be painting outside of our clouds, we're going to set the layer to alpha lock. Of course, if you are a frequent watcher, you already know about alpha lock to turn on alpha lock. You can either tap the layer and pick alpha lock, or you can use two fingers swipe to the right and alpha lock is turned on. And now we are only able to paint on our clouds. Now let's grab that fifth color in the first row and let's go over the underside of our clouds and add a little bit of that orangey red and a nice little texture. Then we are ready to move on to the hills. Let's go to layer two, swipe to the right with two fingers. And for the color, we are going to use this first color in the first row. And just lightly go over that lower area. 
Then we'll move on to the next hill, layer three, swipe to the right with two fingers, then go and grab the second color in the first row. And again, go over that lower area, very gently, not too much pressure. Then we'll move on to layer four. Again, you can swipe to the right with two fingers. And for the color, we are going to use this color, the sixth color in the first row. And again, let's go over the lower area. Let's zoom out a little bit. And you can make these rounded motions, gradually building this texture. But I'm trying to leave the edges alone. Then we can move on to that ground plane, layer five, either swipe to the right with two fingers or tap the layer and turn on alpha lock. Now let's grab this color over here, the fourth color in the first row and add a little bit of lighter texture in this area. And then let's switch to the dark, the dark red. It's the seventh color in the first row. And let's add some darker texture as well. For instance, in this area, lightly glaze over and along the edge of the water here. And let's move on to the next layer. Let's get started with layer 15. Swipe to the right with two fingers to turn on alpha lock. And for the color, let's grab this color over here. The fifth color in the first row. And let's glaze over the top for a little bit of texture. Now let's also add a darker purple to the bottom. For instance, let's grab this one. The first color in the third row. And let's just glaze over the lower area. You don't have to put your pencil tip on the rock, but you can use it lower than that. Slightly adding texture there. All right, next layer, layer 14. Let's turn on alpha lock there. And first let's start with this color that we're already using. Let's darken the lower half, making these circular motions. And then let's switch to a lighter color. Let's grab this fourth color in the first row. And let's touch the tips of these trees. Again with circular motions. All right, back to the layer menu. Let's go to layer 13. We are skipping the house for now. We'll save that for last. Swipe to the right to turn on alpha lock. And let's keep using this color. And for the color, let's go and grab the fifth color in the first row. And let's touch the tops of these little bushes. Gently making these circular motions over here as well. And again, you can also grab a darker purple like this one over here, the first and the third row, and add a little bit of dark spackles to the lower half. For some extra texture. Then we'll move on to our big tree, layer 17, turn on alpha lock. Let's first grab this dark color over here, the second color in the third row, and add a touch of dark purple in this area, making circular motions again. Then we'll switch to the fifth color in the first row. And we'll go over this top area. Again, with circular motions. Then we'll switch to that reddish color, the sixth color in the first row. And add a warm glow here on the outer edge. I feel like we have a little bit too much light, so let's go back to this color, the fourth color in the second row, and go over the center area a little bit again to get a nice transition. 
Now I want to add a little extra touch here by using the selection tool. We are going to make a new layer on top here by tapping the plus. And then we'll go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon again, and we will set it to freehand. Just make sure that color fill is turned off. And now let's make some ovals on top of our tree. Just some small ones like this. Then we'll go and grab a color. We will use this color over here, the first color in the third row. Then grab the brush and go over this area, adding these spackles. And these shapes are a bit like this oval outside of our tree and it gives a nice interesting texture. Then tap the S shape ribbon again to turn off the selection. And now let's move on to the bushes in the foreground. Layer seven here, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And now let's first grab this six color. Yeah, six color in the first row. Go over the edges. Adding some nice glow. And then let's move to this color over here. It's the fifth color in the second row. And let's add some shadow, some dark color here in these corners by using these circular motions over here as well. Just keep making circular motions, gradually building this up. And now we can start working on our house. Let's go to that group. First, I want to move it just a little bit so that it's covered by this little bush. So let's go to the move tool. Let's move it to the left. Then let's go back to the layers. And first, let's start with this roof section. Tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. And then let's first grab this color over here. It's the eight color in the first row. And let's just touch this little corner here. Just a touch is all it needs. Then go and grab the fourth color here in the first row. And then touch this corner over here for a little bit of light on top of the roof. Then we'll move to this layer, layer 10, turn on alpha lock and go and grab that dark color again, the eighth color in the first row and add a little bit of shadow here. Now we'll move on to layer eight, tap it, turn on alpha lock and now let's add some, some shadow for this area. Let's grab this color, the ninth color in the first row and let's make the brush a little bit smaller. We'll set it to 10%. And let's go over this top area, adding some shadow there because that roof is casting a shadow there, blocking the light. And let's also add just a little bit of texture here at the bottom. Now let's move on to the side of the house, layer nine, turn on alpha lock. And let's grab the first color in the first row. Now let's go over this area, lightening that up a little bit again. And once you're happy with the texture of your house, you can actually merge these layers. You can just pinch the house layers together. Now we'll make a new layer on top by tapping the plus and setting this to clipping mask. Now it's clipped to the layer and whatever we paint here will only show up on the house. We are going to grab this color, the ninth color in the first row. And then we'll go to the selection tool, set it to a rectangle and turn on color fill. And we'll make a rectangular shape for a little door. Then we'll go to the layer menu again, tap this layer, turn on alpha lock and we'll grab that dark color again. It's the eighth color in the first row. And now with our brush, with our spackle brush, we'll add a little bit of shadow here. It's very subtle. I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera, but we're adding a shadow to that upper right area. Now for our final touch, it's time to add a reflection to the water. Now before you do this step, it's important to be 
content, be happy with what you have done so far. If you are in doubt, you can always just duplicate your entire project in the gallery. So you will always have a backup, but we are going to merge some layers now. So it'll be harder to make adjustments afterwards. The layers we are going to merge are the layers of the, the ground, the bushes, the trees, all the way up to the sky. So let's go to the layer menu. And now let's go and grab these layers with the rocks and the water. Let's select both of them and drag them up here just underneath these bushes. And then we are going to merge the rest. And I can do that by pinching layers together like this. And now we are going to duplicate this layer so we can create a reflection. Drag to the left, tap duplicate, and then put it on top of this layer six. And then tap the layer and turn on clipping mask. Now it's clipped to that water layer. Then we'll go to the move tool, the little arrow, and tap flip vertical. And make sure that you have snapping turned on and drag this layer downwards. And we'll move it until we have something like this. Make sure that nothing is like floating in there. Then we'll go back to the layer menu, tap the little N, and we are going to turn down the opacity of this layer. So drag to the left and go for something like 45%. Now we just need a reflection of these rocks. So let's duplicate that layer as well. Drag to the left, tap duplicate. Let's grab the bottom one, then go for the arrow and again use flip vertical. And we'll have to move it up a little bit. We'll just look at the left rock right now. You can just tap on the sides to make it move. And now we need this rock to be like a proper reflection as well. So let's select it. Let's go to the selection menu, use the freehand selection tool, turn off color fill and select this rock. Then go to the move tool again. And then let's just move this one down. Then turn off the move tool. And I can see that they are properly aligned. And now we can turn down the opacity here as well by tapping the end, turn it down to 45%. But as you can see, when you look at the image here, you can see the reflection of the house over here, which wouldn't make sense because it would be blocked by the rock. So we'll have to remove that part of the house reflection. Now, a way to do that is by tapping this layer with the reflection of the rocks, then using select. Then we'll go to the layers again. We'll go to this layer that is the reflection layer of the house. Tap it and use clear. And now we have fixed this area. Now let's tap this layer, turn on clipping mask here as well, because we are going to make another layer on top, which also needs to be clipped. So tap the plus, then tap that new layer, turn on clipping mask. And now we are going to grab this color over here, the second color in the second row. We'll set the size of the spackle brush. We'll set it back to 45%. And we are going to make spackles on top of the water. Just cover the water with spackles. Not too much, something like this. Now we're going to tap this layer and turn on mask. And now by using mask, we are going to remove parts of this. Well, not really remove. We are going to mask parts of this spackle layer that we have just created. Make sure that your color is set to black. And then let's go to the selection tool, set it to rectangle and turn on color fill. And now we are going to make horizontal lines with varying thicknesses to create like the stylized illusion of water. So every time we make a selection like this, you'll see that part of the part of the layer gets masked. So make varying thicknesses. Let's make a thin line over here coming from that rock. 
just try to vary it up vary the well like i said the thicknesses to get some nice stylized water here and to get a better look you can turn off the selection tool by tapping the s and you see that it's a nice stylized effect we can actually lower the opacity just a little bit let's go to the layer menu tap the n turn it down a little bit to let's say 60 percent and there you have your stylized landscape of a house by the water i hope you have enjoyed following this tutorial let me know if you did and don't forget to hit that thumbs up i really appreciate the support especially from my wonderful patrons at patreon we wouldn't be able to create these tutorials without them. So shout out to them. You are awesome. And if you want to join the wonderful community, then don't forget to check out Patreon. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.